Welcome back to Mayo Clinic Radio. I'm Dr. Tom Shives. And I'm Tracy McRae. A stress test, also a stress test, also called an exercise stress test, shows how your heart works during physical activity. Because exercise makes your heart pump harder and faster, an exercise stress test can tell a lot about how your heart is functioning and if it's getting enough blood. A stress test usually involves walking on a treadmill or riding a stationary bike while your heart rhythm, blood pressure, and breathing are being monitored. And here to discuss the cardiac stress test, why it's done, and what doctors can learn from it is Mayo Clinic cardiologist Dr. Paul McKee. Welcome to the program, Dr. McKee. It's nice to meet you. Yeah, thanks for having me on board. Dr. McKee, good to have you. So This sounds like a lot of work. So uh, who, <laughs> who ought to have this test? Yeah, so... In general, stress tests are done for two reasons. Uh, The first is to diagnose coronary artery disease or a blockage in the blood vessels which supply blood flow to the heart. And the second reason is to help treat other heart conditions like valve disease. They can help determine when it's best to operate on a person who has valve disease. And number the, the first one is probably the, the, the most common reason. Certainly. Coronary artery disease, meaning that there's blockage or plaque that uh, involves the arteries that supply blood to the heart, which are obviously critical. Yes. And so if there's a lack of blood flow, then a patient may have chest discomfort with activity or shortness of breath with activity. And the stress test can be very helpful in diagnosing patients who have these significant blockages. I'm not a doctor. I sit next to one. I'm sitting next to two right now, actually. Um, But it just doesn't sound safe to stress the heart. I know it's being done in a hospital, but is it dangerous at all? There are certain conditions in where we do not want to stress the heart. If a person is having active chest pain or unstable symptoms, otherwise stress testing is quite safe. It's done in a controlled environment. We are monitoring blood pressure, heart rate, the heart's rhythm, and closely following symptoms. It's done under the supervision of a MD uh, and very qualified technicians. Do you ever have somebody get on the treadmill and walk about 10 steps and say, okay, that's good, you, you need to <laughs> go to the hospital? That rarely happens, uh, it, but it can. And it's related to the fact that you realize that the heart function is so poor that there's something significantly wrong like severe coronary artery disease. Sometimes we can pick up severe coronary artery disease within the first minute of a stress test. So to that point, what if a person is not capable of running or biking if they've got a bad knee or something? So so great question. So the most common way to stress the heart is exercise. If a person cannot exercise, we have ways to chemically stress the heart. So we can use chemicals or medicines to increase the heart rate to uh, cause the heart to pump more forcefully. Uh, And those can be used as a surrogate if a patient is not able to exercise. See, that doesn't sound safe either. (laughs) How long does it- You've got a doctor, a heart (laughs) doctor right there. How how could you be in a better place? I guess it'll be all right. (laughs) How long does this test take? So it typically takes, if we're exercising, 10 minutes or less. Uh, If it's a chemical stress test, it can take up to an hour, 90 minutes. And then what what, uh, kind of results uh, do you give to the patient? I mean, after the test is over, what can you normally tell the patient about their heart? So it's important to know that these are not absolute tests, meaning they can, we're not specifically looking at the blood vessels to see if there's a blockage. We're looking at sequelae of the blockage. So, for example, a change in the EKG that we suspect is due to a blockage or a change in the imaging of the heart, which we suspect is due to a blockage. They're about 90% accurate. So we can say, based on the stress test results, that it's very likely that you have a blockage. We can tell what the location of the blockage. And generally, we can tell how critical that blockage is. How do you tell the location of the blockage? Based on the imaging that we're doing of the heart during the stress test. Mm-hmm. So we're looking at specific areas of the heart. And if the heart is getting enough blood flow, it's, it's beating, it's pumping normally, vigorously. And if it's not getting enough blood flow, it just doesn't look right. It's not moving as well as it should be. It's not moving as well as the rest of the heart. 
And if that if that were the case, that you saw something where you suspected fairly severe coronary artery disease, to confirm that, then you would probably next step do an angiogram, where you would put some dye in there and you could actually see where the blockage was and how severe it was. If the clinical situation is severe enough or the stress test is severely abnormal, yes. Typically, the next step is to actually directly visualize the blockages with a coronary angiogram. And that's an invasive study uh, where we uh, place dye inside the heart and then we scan the heart and we can see the blood vessels. How do you explain the situation where every once in a while you hear about somebody who died suddenly? And they said, you know, or their spouse says, just last week he was in for his physical exam and had a stress test and everything was fine. Yeah. So it's, that's a great question. And, and a lot of, if, if we're looking at patients who have heart attacks, those are caused by blockages, but typically they are relatively small blockages that don't cause symptoms, even with exercise. And those blockages very quickly burst, and they go from a, a mild blockage to 100% occluded, 100% blockage, just in the snap of a finger. And so we cannot detect those types of blockages on a stress test because they're quite mild. Um, and so that's where we see that situation, someone who may be asymptomatic and then have a heart attack unexpectedly. Yeah. You mentioned uh, other things that you're looking at, and one is, would be the EKG or the heart rhythm. Are there some instances where you'll put somebody on the stress test and their heartbeat is normal when they start, but as you stress the heart, they develop an arrhythmia, an Certain, abnormal rhythm? Uh, certainly. And what does that tell you? It, it can tell us that there's a blockage. Uh, it can tell us why a patient may be having shortness of breath or chest pain. It may not be due to a blockage. It may be due to a rhythm problem. For example, a person may be exercising and going into a rhythm called atrial fibrillation, and that could explain their symptoms. So uh, as we said at the beginning of the program, it's very helpful in identifying blockages, but can also help us identify and treat other heart conditions. And you mentioned valvular disease and that it, it would help you uh, determine what and when to treat that. Can you expand on that? So if a patient has a severe valve abnormality, but they're having no symptoms, often the risk of surgery or fixing the valve outweighs the benefit. If it's unclear if a patient is having symptoms for, due to the valve disease, we can put them on a treadmill and say, geez, how far can you walk? How far can you exercise to determine if a person is truly asymptomatic or not? We can also assess the blood pressure response and the rhythm, as you mentioned earlier, which can lead us towards surgery or continued observation. And what is, what is it that gets you to the point of needing a cardiac stress test? I mean, is this something you say, well, it's my I haven't had a physical for five years, and I suppose now I'm going to have to do this. Or is there something going on that would lead you to this point? So great question. So typically, stress tests are done when a person is having symptoms. And symptoms would be chest discomfort, shortness of breath, chest pressure, those types of things. We do not routinely do stress tests on asymptomatic patients. Patients who have no symptoms, there's really not a good indication to do a stress test. All right. The main indications, chest pain, shortness of breath, those are the two big ones. Those would be the two big. And are most of these tests ordered by the general practitioner or the internist or the family physician, or do you have to see a cardiologist first to determine if you really need it? Many family medicine, general internal medicine doc order these uh, studies. Often if there's a question about is the study indicated or what's the best type of stress test, our family medicine doctors or internal medicine doctors will call us and we can help uh, move them in the right direction. The cardiac stress test, it's a uh, test that could give us a lot of information. Thanks so much for sharing everything we wanted to know about it with us. Mayo Clinic cardiologist, Dr. Paul McKee, thanks so much for being with us. Thanks for having me.